especially in the off season, who've got insights and experiences that the four of us, quite frankly, couldn't even touch. Let's get to our best friend of the show on Tuesday mornings. He's a three-time NFL Executive of the Year with loads of experience and loads of insight. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Pioli. Hey, Welcome back Scott. To the Football. Hey, Good morning, Scott. everybody. I love that. Your favorite guest on Tuesday mornings between on Tuesdays. 8 Tuesdays. and 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be great to be. Got to be some parameters, guys. Scott. I mean, come on, man. we got a lot of guests that come on the show. Uh, look, let's get back to what happened over the weekend on Sunday. Julio gets traded, and he goes for a second rounder, essentially. And there wasn't this long line of teams. You were around Julio Jones for several seasons when you were in Atlanta. What type of guy and what type of player is Julio? And then, furthermore, what was your reaction for the compensation? that the Titans had to give up to the Falcons to get one of the greatest wide receivers of his generation. Peter, you know, I wasn't really surprised at the compensation. There were a lot of picks being thrown out there, what they should get, what they could get. But when you're in the middle of a trade, you can want all that you want. They could have wanted a first rounder, a first rounder plus. But the reality is you're only going to get what someone else is willing to give. As I talked to a number of people throughout the NFL, front office executives, some head coaches, I wasn't surprised where this landed and how it landed. Again, understanding that Julio is probably going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, but the fact is at 32 years old in this current climate and the contract, only a second rounder is what the Falcons are going to be able to get. So I wasn't really surprised by the compensation. I'll tell you this though, what the Titans are going to get is a player who's going to give everything that he has. You know, there's a little bit too much talk about his durability and sit and things like that. But to me, on Sundays, Julio always showed up. He's only missed a couple of games. The tough part is how much practice time he's going to get with Ryan Tannehill. But again, I think that this was a fair trade at this point in time in Julio's career and for the contract that he was under. Scott, the Falcons have been trying to get back into the NFC conversation since that terrible loss in Super Bowl 51. So now they've gone and trade away, traded away a future Hall of Famer. What goes into making a decision like that? And what happens now with the Falcons? You know, Aditi, what goes into this trade happening is, again, you've got a new general manager, you've got a new head coach, you've got an entirely new staff. There's a lot of other changes that have happened within the organization. And when that happens, really nobody's job is safe. But I think what they understood was Julio and his agent, Jimmy Sexton, were sending messages loud and clear to the new front office and to owner Arthur Blank that they didn't, he didn't want to be there this year. So they knew it. They did a very good job of not making a spectacle of it. Everyone wanted to talk about it because it was news and it was leaked out there that he wanted out. But again, you have to look at what the situation is going to be. And when you have a player like Julio who demands so much respect because he really does, he's a tremendous human being, a tremendous player, incredible work ethic. What you want to do is treat him right and treat him fairly. So as you lead up to this, you absolutely have to make the trade. But the other thing is, Aditi, you don't want to get completely fleeced. You get the best deal that you can get. Now this team can move on, move forward, knowing that Julio is going to be happy and knowing that they're going to have some compensation in return. Scott, before I get to my question, I have to ask you something. Uh, is that a banana on your shelf, or oh. are you just happy to see me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I heard Kyle <laughs> talking earlier about his bad banana, and this is all they have out here on Nantucket. You think Australia's bad? Nantucket, bad banana's here, my brother. Okay. All right, all right. I, I was just curious. Uh, I definitely had to address that. Okay, so um, our, our network insider, Ian Rappaport, he reported that Buccaneers head coach Bruce Arians, general manager Jason Light, they have received contractual updates. Um, so there's going to be a raise for Arians, an extension for Light. How important is it for a team not just to keep players and keep them on the squad, but also the front office? Nate, I think it's critical. By the way, I love that new phrase, a contract update. Great work, Ian. Right. I really think this is critical because what every team is looking for is not only to have success, but to keep some degree of continuity. And it's kind of like the chicken or egg. Does continuity give you success? And then once you have success, can you keep continuity? And to me, this was a critical move. You've got two people, Bruce Arians and Jason Light, that earned the right to have contract extensions or contract updates, as we like to call them on Good Morning Football. 
But to me, I think this is a really, really smart move by the club. And really, it gives the players a degree of, self, uh, of stability as well because they know that they're going to be working with the same people. Here's the thing, though. We've seen all of the players that were re-signed. We've seen the head coach re-signed. We've seen Jason re-signed. What they have to understand, though, is they can't be the same football team that they were last year. They can look the same, but they're going to have to perform better because everyone's gunning for them. So having continuity, looking the same, keeping everything the same is great, but now you have to be better as well. Yes, Scott, the people who run my crappy quarantine gave me a crappy banana for my breakfast tomorrow, which I will eat. <laughs> uh, thank you for having yours in solidarity. I know you're an 80s music fan, uh, Scott, so you'll know there was a group called Banana Rama who in 1984 gave us Cool <laughs> Summer, which is exactly what the Green Bay Packers might be having because with mandatory mini wow, Kyle, good work. To start today, Aaron Rodgers not expected <laughs> to be there, Scott. Aside from the 80s music, just put it aside for a second if we can. How should the Packers and Packers fans be feeling today without their first ballot Hall of Famer showing up? I think they should be concerned, but it's not time to panic. The worst thing that you can do as a leadership group is panic. They've been planning for the day that Aaron Rodgers is going to be gone. They did when they, when they drafted Jordan Love. But right now, Aaron Rodgers is actually, he, he hasn't given his words as to what he's gonna do. Right now, there's gonna be a bunch of men at work Kyle, but there won't be one nice. work. and I'm not talking about Colin Hay, I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. So I would say what Aaron Rodgers said a few years ago, R-E-L-A-X, relax Packers fans, relax Packers front office, everything is going to work out as it's supposed to, and they'll make the best of it. Oh man, my oh, man. Wow, we got... <laughs> We got Colin Hay and Men at Work, of course. We love their song. We got Banana Rama and Cruel Summer. We've got the Karate Kid soundtrack now in my head. And we've got Scott Pioli dropping gems. Scott, always great to hear from you. We got to talk to the Nantucket City Council about the banana product going yeah, on right now. Absolutely. We're not having a great season for that, but it is always great having you on the show, dude. Thanks so much. Thank you. Again, the great bananas job, on Nantucket, that's a real problem. No, it's because the caviar <laughs> and the so good.